dry and warm and a light. A light glows from inside. I'm so close, but I don't think I can reach it. Everything else is underwater, twisted ladders of rails and ties. Giant trees, once held fast and growing deep into the earth, are now hurtling towards me, unhinged, violent. What was once a river is now black, boiling sea. Great waves roll in from the hills, breaking, roaring, sending up sheets of foam. I am so close. I am so close, the light no longer a beacon. I am so close. I sink to my hips, to my stomach, to my chest, and then I sleep. And in this sleep, there is a rake. Someone or thing is holding out a rake, a clawed talisman, a signal to grab, grasp, hold on tightly, so I take hold and it starts to pull me free, sucking, oozing, slipping, stretching through the mud that is doing everything it can to drag me back, hold me down. I am so close, but my legs, they're changing, sending out shoots and feelers that take hold of the ground, anchoring me in place, fixed in mud, sand, buried with hundreds of fish, breathing heavy dank air, sinking in a small boat, on an endless sea, unwilling to let me go. Will this never end? I'm puzzled by how I have changed, but I can no longer go back.
一日が終わり日が落ちる鳥たちはねぐらへ帰り安心を得る一瞬の動かぬ時静けさほんの一時そしてカエルたちが星々を迎える。I'm standing at a three way intersection, four way counting the lane to the south. An overhead highway adds even more lanes, and the intersecting train lines even more noise. Pedestrians stream along the footpath towards the station, others wait at bus stops or for the clicking green to go crossings. Cars, trucks, motorbikes all rumble by, rev at red lights, and the sound is merciless. I don't know how long I've been standing here or what time of day it is. It feels like I've been here forever, or I'm suspended in time, or maybe no time, or that perhaps I'm caught in a never ending time. Or is it a moment of time stopped? And at this location, the noise, the busyness is a constant. What I mean is, It's not just in the morning and early evening, those momentary slices in the day when it seems as if the whole world is on its way to somewhere else. No. Here in this place, the world is constantly on its way to somewhere else, and the sound is merciless. Except. Except when. There's this one moment when. I'm standing at a three way intersection, four way counting the lane to the south. An overhead highway adds even more lanes, and the intersecting railway lines even more noise. Pedestrians stream along the footpath towards the station. Others wait at bus stops or for the clicking green to go crossings. Cars, trucks, motorbikes all rumble by, rev at red lights, and the sound is merciless, except, except when there's this one moment where all falls silent. Completely. We're a certain conjunction of red lights halting traffic flow of between train schedules and pedestrian crossings produces a long pause of silence. Where this deep, breathing, heaving mess of a life of never ending time pours forth into a moment, a discrete moment of time stopped. Where each and everything, animate, inanimate, has paused for a much needed collective reset. Yeah. But Is that what's really happening here? I mean, are we really capable of doing this, of seeing? No, of being the turning point, recognizing the tilt enough to start from scratch to make that shift? Or, or are we, in our multiple oblivions, continually missing this moment, diving deeper into annihilation, immune to awe and wonder?
Once upon a time, an 81-year-old man flies across the country, from west to east, coast to coast, a vast distance is covered, a great migration. He flies across the country, searching, searching, hurtling through the skies over this great ancient body of wild deserts and oceans, a red land, a brown land, a white land, a green land carrying ridged spines and limbs and salt-crusted organs and meandering red veins. An 81-year-old man, a sage perhaps, an elder. He flies across the country searching, searching until he touches down at a small country airport. He has been discarded. And to those he now stands before, he is a lost man, a penniless man, a homeless man, a stranger carrying two suitcases trying to outwit the shadows that keep following. The children offer him their homes, but which one will he choose? One lives in a big grand nest, opulent and solid. The other can only offer the man a whiff of home, like a tree sprite's halo all covered in fairy sprit and bits of twig. Her nest is fragile and flimsy, delicate and downfield, always movable and in constant need of repair, a nest much like his own. So which one will he choose? <laughs> Mm-hmm. 